Today I am making a pineapple upside down cake for my son's birthday. And uh, so if you've never made one before, um, we've got our pineapple and some maraschino cherries. Uh, but first we are going to make a cake batter. And the recipe I'm using is from this cookbook I have uh, by King Arthur Flower. And if you're in the U.S., you've probably heard of King Arthur Flour. It's found in most grocers. And they make um, a variety of flours. And the flour that uh, we're using in this recipe is a self-rising flour. So it already has the baking uh, powder or baking soda in it. Um, but if you don't have that, um, and you're using this cookbook, um, it gives you a substitute option and tells you how much of the baking soda and baking powder to add. But um, anyway, I'm gonna go ahead and get started. Um, this recipe makes one that you cook in a pie pan like this, and then you dump it out when it's done. But I'm going to make two because I, um, I'm gonna make a double batch. So the first thing I'm going to do is you need half a stick of butter, so I'm going to cut this in half and put uh, it in each of this with the brown sugar. And then we're going to heat it up in the oven until it says it's a slurry of butter and brown sugar. So basically, you just want the brown sugar to just start dissolving a little bit. So um, let's get started. Okay, just took these out of the oven and I'm just going to spread the brown sugar around so it can melt. I did not cook these on the stove top over the flame, not in these um, containers. Although um, the recipe actually had you cook this in a skillet. So if you have a metal skillet, then you can actually cook it right on the stove top instead of baking it in the oven like I did. Um, but I just baked it in the oven since I'm just using the glass and the um, pottery. Um, so anyway, once the, you've got the um, sugar uh, kind of dissolved into a slurry, so they describe it, uh, then we're going to just lay the pineapple pieces, arrange them and the cherries on top. It also has you add um, pecans and I have pecans but uh, my mother never put pecans in our pineapple upside down cake so I'm just gonna do it without. Okay so I just brought the pans over on this wooden block and uh, so you can see what I'm doing. I'm going to open a can of pineapple rings and then just arrange the pineapple rings. It's okay if you get a little bit of the juice in there. That's what makes it so good. So we just arrange about, I think we can do six piece, six slices. I don't know, this seems kind of, I'm gonna have to kind of go off the edges a little bit to get six pieces in here. And I hope I have enough for us six on each so I actually might have to do five on each because I'm going to run out of pineapple I think yeah that's all I have is five or there's like ten slices total so that means that's fine I'm actually gonna pour just a little bit of juice and then the cherries so we'll just put uh, so you can see what I'm doing here. Okay, so I got the jumbo cherries here. So these will be really nice and dramatic. So put one in the middle and one inside each of these pineapple rings. Mm -hmm. 
So this is what it's going to look like. Isn't that beautiful? Now that I've got the pineapple topping ready, it's time to make the cake batter. So, like I said, I'm going to double the recipe since I'm making two cakes. So I've got my measuring cups. I've got um, the glass pouring ones for liquid and the dry measure right here. And uh, so we need um, two eggs. And it's always best, I'm using these because I just bought them, even though I have some eggs in the cupboard or in the refrigerator. These ones are at room temperature. Oh, it looks like one of them's broken. Bummer. I also got an extra large bowl since I'm making the double batch. So, and I'm gonna save the shells for the compost. Um, but it's best to use loop our room temperature eggs because uh, if all the ingredients are at the same temperature, then uh, baking is a, something that you have to do exact or it won't rise properly. So you want to have everything at the, the room temperature. Um, and I've tried, um, even just with pancakes, I added frozen blueberries to the pancakes once and they didn't, uh, wherever the blueberries were, uh, the batter didn't cook because the frozen blueberries prevented them from cooking, so they were really doughy. So it's good to just uh, make sure your butter and your eggs and everything, especially the eggs are at room temperature. So now we need a third cup oil. So I'm going to do a, um, Oh, luckily it has a perforated seal. You just have to find the right place. Um, so I need two thirds cup of oil. All right, so it's brand new. So I'm gonna open it. And then it's good to um, leave this at room temperature, or I mean it on a flat surface so that your measure is exact. And then get down at eye level so that I can... All right, that's perfect. All right, so I'm gonna get a whisk. And if you had an electric mixer, that would be good. I used to have one. It's, those are really good, especially if you make, bake a lot of bread. But um, I, I broke mine, I dropped it, and it broke, so I haven't bought a new one. But I don't mind actually making things by hand. Okay, so I'm going to...